Hello watercolor lovers, welcome to my YouTube channel Watercolor Impressions. This week we are going to learn how to paint light and shadows in watercolors. Watercolors are the best medium for it. We will paint a Toronto downtown morning scene with a crisp lighting. Before we get into it, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And uh, let's get started guys. As you guys know, I always provide a drawing template and reference so you guys can paint and follow with me. We have to keep our drawing simple and look for major shapes in the reference. I always push my students to come up with their own vision and their impressions. And I also want you to come up with your own as well. And uh, let's have some fun. When it comes to painting light and shadows, always think of painting the light first. It can be the lightest value in the painting or the light which illuminates in our scene. Let's start with the sky. I'm using cobalt blue and I'm making sure that I'm not going over the building. So I'm keeping it light as well because for the sky we have to keep it light because our scene, our focal point, everything is in the foreground. I'm also using neutral tint and a little bit of cerium blue for back of the building and I'm focusing on the major big building in the background. So I'm using cobalt blue and a little bit of radiant in it because there's a little bit of green in it. As you can see, I also left the eyelets for the paper so that we don't have to paint again. I'm making sure of my perspective. We don't have to be exactly accurate in painting all the windows because it's just a background. I've seen a lot of beginners spend a lot of time on the background because that's the last thing a viewer will focus on. So um, now I'm uh, using a uh, cat yellow and cerulean blue to paint the light of the trees and you can see it's super light now i jumped onto the foreground building so i'm using yellow ochre and raw amber and i'm keeping it really light as well and i want to create that warmth now i'm throwing cobalt blue for the windows here and there i'm not you can see i'm not worried about all the windows in the reference because this painting is all about the foreground and the crisp lighting so for the foreground, I'm mixing neutral tint and raw amber and a little bit of yellow ochre in it because I want to create that warmth in the foreground. So I want to create a gradient from the background to the foreground. So as you can see, I'm putting the first wash. I'm also making sure that I'm not going over the people as well as the cars. And as you can see in the reference, there's only one person. I always like to have odd numbers in my painting, so that's why there is three people in my scene. But as it comes to the foreground, I want to go a little bit darker because that's gonna get like a beautiful lead-in to our painting. And I am taking a clean brush and I'm taking off the painting for the street lines in our road in the foreground. And there's also a wall which is close to the foreground. So for that, it's going to be a little bit darker, so I'm going darker on that foreground. So I'm using burnt amber and a little bit of neutral tint here and there to add a little bit of color variations in it. I squinted my eyes and I saw the reference. Now I'm adding the mid-tone for our, the building at the background. So for this, I'm using uh, cobalt blue and neutral tint and I'm painting the windows for the building. As you can see, I wasn't exactly matching to the reference because since it's going to act as a background, so I'm just throwing the windows with the same color in it. Even I saw like there was a building at the background, so I'm just going to use French ultramarine blue. And um, it looks really strong now, but as it dries out, it's going to get lighter. So as soon as we add the windows, you can see it gives an impression of a building at the background. And I also want to make sure that it blends with the background on uh, uh, the foreground. So I'm going for the next mid value for our trees. For the trees mid value, I'm using cerulean blue, cat yellow, and a little bit of red in it. And I'm also making sure that to throw a uh, neutral tint here and there for the next value there, because so that it gives beautiful broken textures for our trees. I'm also taking the green at the background because connecting shape is really imperative in a painting. 
So for the background, I'm using a little bit of magenta and cerulean blue. And you can see it's just a single strong shape at the background. So the reason being I added at the end because I want to make sure that all my painting uh, is connected. So I squinted my eyes. I saw that uh, the plane was missing on the background building. So I'm using neutral tint and a little bit of cobalt blue and I glazed over that building. As soon as I did that, you could see the lighting popped up. Let's start the darker values from the midground. So I'm using um, neutral tint and a little bit of magenta and a little bit of French ultramarine blue. Whenever I do darks, I want to make sure that I mix colors because I don't want to get a single flat shape. And I also took that uh, darker value in the foreground as well. And I'm also going a little bit darker when the wash is wet because that will give a little bit of textures in our painting. So that also looks good and pleasing to eyes. And there's also some uh, red color and blue color in there in the background. So I'm just throwing it in the midground and I'm just throwing it there just, just to get the colors in it. Now let's focus on the foreground building. So I'm using Ara Amber and a little bit of neutral tint in it. And you can see I'm just leaving out some eyelets here and there for the windows. And it also attached to the other building. I'm not worried about it. I'm just leaving a little bit of whites here and there. But I'm not exactly true to our reference, but I don't care because it's just going to be the foreground because the lighting in the foreground is our focal point. I'm just going a little bit of uh, darker on our uh, in the foreground building because I squinted my eyes so I also saw that it is darker in reality. Uh, for the windows I'm throwing blue here and the cobalt blue here and there. And I'm just keep building up the pigment um, for the foreground because in the foreground things get stronger and the values are darker as it comes down to the foreground. Now let's focus on the foreground trees. For the foreground trees, I'm using neutral tint and a little bit of varying in it because I want to get the darker green pigment in it. And I'm also leaving some, uh, not going over that sign in the foreground because it's gonna act as a really good lead in. So I'm just gonna make sure that I'm not going over it. So I'm also taking the darker tones in the midground as well. So you can see it kind of gives an illusion of glow in our trees now, as soon as we added the darker tone. So in reality, the reference of the car is black, but I'm making it blue and uh, I'll be focusing on more of the foreground elements. So whenever I paint cars, I make sure that I also add the ground value as soon as I paint the cars because that anchors the car on the ground. And for the people's face, I'm using um, cat orange. And for the signs, I'm using cat yellow. There are three signs there, so I'm just keep adding and building the pigment. And as soon as I add the cat load towards the left, you know, it kind of looks dull, but I'm going to use white paint to bring it back um, later. And for the foreground building, I want to make it super dark because that also anchors our car as well. I'm not worried about uh, that being not connected now because we're going to have a shadow peeking through. For the foreground element, uh, it's not dark. So what I'm doing is I'm using neutral tint and burnt amber and I add a little bit of uh, pigment on it. So as soon as I add that, you guys can see it came to the foreground element. For the people or for the signs and the traffic poles, I'm using neutral tint. And this is a thick pigment consistency. That means no water in it. It's just that uh, with the pure pigment. And I'm also adding the things at the background as well. And there's also another pole in the front. I'm also adding that as well. So everything is floating, but it will make a sense as soon as we add the shadows. And for the sign in the foreground, which is in front of the trees, I'm adding that. And I'm also adding the road, which also connects the street in the foreground as well. For that, I'm using neutral tint. For the shirt and i also gave them a shopping bag because they are you know they went shopping in the morning and they're coming back and there's a person crossing the line and i want to create a contrast so i made the first person dark and the second person lighter so we are almost at the end of a painting so now i mixed uh, cobalt blue and french ultramarine blue for the shadows which is peeking through as soon as we add the shadows, everything makes sense and everything is anchoring on the ground. 
Now I want to add the shadows in the foreground and I also want to make sure that I connect the foreground building as well as the car. And as I saw in the reference and there is also the wall which is in the foreground have a shadow as well. So I'm going to keep adding with the same consistency. And I also saw that the trees are also casting a shadows behind the people. So I can add that as well to, so, to show that you know there's a lighting happening behind the tree. And uh, when I squinted my eyes, uh, my trees are not coming forward. So I took uh, ultramarine blue and I kind of added uh, another glaze over on my trees. So now as you can as I added, the trees came into the front as well. So, and I also noticed that my poles aren't dark enough. So I'm just glazing over it again to make sure that it's in front of that wall in the foreground. So I'm also adding a darker pigment where that wall anchors. So I'm also adding some street lines. And there's also a light in the pole, so I'm going to be adding that as well. And I'm using directional lines in the foreground. As I mentioned earlier, the signal light in the foreground is a little bit dark, so I'm going to use cadmium yellow and Chinese white to bring back the signal lights in the foreground. So I'm taking the same highlights here and there. I'm just throwing it here and there to create some highlights in the foreground and the background. Sometimes I use it because whenever I use Chinese white, I also use a little bit of woke on it so that I get a warmth in my eyelids as well. So when I looked into it, I also noticed that the signal light looks so weak and it's also in the foreground. So I want a really good contrast and things which are in the foreground have really high saturation and and which bring it to forward um, in the foreground. So now I want to go on to the, the signal which is in front of the trees and there's also like a brown uh, warm board which is facing at the back side. So I'm going to add the detail as well. And I'm also taking a, a neutral tint and I want to add uh, the signal lights now. So now I want to add a signal lights. So I'm using cadmium red with Chinese white in it. And I'm also throwing it the red here and there just to have some color variations in my painting. Let's go and finish this painting now. So I'm going to use Chinese white and I'm trying to bring back some eyelids in my darker parts in my painting, especially in the trees because I want to have some kind of light peeking through from the background. And I also want to create eyelids on the wall, which is because of the backlighting. And I'm also adding some eyelids for the people as well as the for, for the cars. But when you do this step, make sure that you don't overboard with it because sometimes, personally, I also go, go overboard with this uh, uh, adding eyelids in my painting. So just add wherever it's necessary and look under your reference, squint your eyes and it will give you an idea what to do. And I'm also using the white paint which is in my brush so I, I thought of using it on my street light as well. So you can see um, as soon as I add that eyelet on the street uh, sign, it kind of made everything come in the front. Like even for the boards, which is in front of the trees, as soon as I add that, it came in the front, in the foreground. And for the cars as well. And it's almost done, but when I squinted my eyes and looked at my reference, the foreground building is uh, it's a little bit lighter. So I want to even... Um, make it to bring you in farther so i'm using neutral tint at the bottom as it goes down it kind of creates a gradient and uh, it also uh, anchors in the ground so i'm going to take white paint and i'm just going to add some windows here and there using my white paint so i'm um, keep building up the windows um, i don't have any logic on the windows because that's not our focal point the focal point is the people as well as the street which is glowing in the mid ground to the foreground so the last step, when I saw it, um, the wall in the front, it got a little bit weaker. So I'm going to use neutral tint and burnt amber and I'm just mixing it and adding it in the shadows as well. And that's it guys, uh, the painting is officially done. 
it was nice to paint with you folks to recap everything start with the light or the lightest value in our reference and build some mid tones and darker tones and save the highlights for the finishing touches let me know what you learned from this video and what's your favorite color in this painting and what techniques have you learned today and how are you going to use it in your part of your work if you have any other requests or subjects you want me to cover in watercolors let me know in the comments or write me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com thanks again for watching this tutorial please hit the subscribe button and get weekly video updates from our channel and uh, good luck with your painting folks